Atlas Pro webinar. It is a beautiful day in September, and I'm so glad that you guys have joined us today. Um, we are talking about some really fun things, um, as always, but I think today really highlights in my mind, you know, one of the things that really differentiates Atlas and our competitors, which is caring about the things that you guys care about. Um, and so I'm super excited to be talking about the and then being able to inform our contractor community on the four things that you want to know before you choose a merchant services partner. Um, really important topic, right? Financing, how to do financing, what's the best options to, to have financing? What are all of those terms? <laughs> I think that's half the battle if we can understand the terms that are given. But so many really good things that we're going to jump into and i um, excited to have um, our SPIN executive um, and consultant and friend to Atlas on. Hey, Jay DeRosier, what's up? Good morning. Good morning, Atlas family, Asphalt Lifers. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on. Of course. And it's always fun to have have um, our partners on. And we've been working with Spin for a little bit over a year. And um, it's been just incredible to be able to educate contractors on, you know, okay, you, you got a credit card. You, you have I Square or PayPal and what is the best practice? What are the next steps? So this will be really great to be able to inform our contractor community of that. And if you're currently on the webinar, you can hopefully hear me. Um, go ahead and pop something in the chat. That is how we'll be communicating throughout this um, webinar. What's up, Alex Dale? He's dropping, <laughs> dropping those hearts. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. Loud and clear. Great. Glad to hear that you can hear us. Yep. Feel free to pop in um, some thoughts, say good morning, and let us know that you can hear us. Awesome. I'm just going to be toggling back and forth. Let me get my screen going here. So... There we go. Everybody can see it. Get my great. Good morning, Alexis. How are you? Yeah, if you're on and you can hear us, go ahead and pop in a good morning to me. Let me know that you can hear us and see the screen. I'm just going to arrange some stuff over here so it looks nice for you guys. Great. Hey, good morning, Angel. And hey, I want to give a shout out to our one of our contractors in the Wisconsin area, Paul Saharsky. I got on about 20 minutes early to get prepared for this webinar, and Paul was already on the webinar. He was like killing it. So, Paul, I have an Asphalt Life hat coming your way. You are you were prepared this morning. You were ready for the webinar. Happy to hear um, what um, Jay has to say and. I just appreciate that, that you are jumping on. So what's up? Good morning, Paul. So glad to have you on. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Sean. I'm glad that you guys are on. And also, as a part of our Asphalt Life community, we are so thrilled. We get the opportunity to have um, our in-house staff always joining on these webinars to support um, these tools and learn and continue educating themselves on best practices and learning. And as always, when we talk about finances, we cannot separate ourselves from our in-house consultant and expert, um, Wade, Mr. Wade Davis. What's up, Wade? What's going on? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And then also, I get I'm thrilled when he walked in the door. We never get to see him. So, um, what's up, Paul? Because Sari, our product manager, is in the house. So we got a full house over here, and everybody's thrilled to just be sharing, um, be able to share some best practices and tips for merchant processing, and you know, really educating our our audience today on what you need to know. What are those key terms that you need to know? What you need to do once you secured a merchant um, services provider? And, and Jay, so um, 
really excited to be able to share that with our audience because like we said here in this piece, you know, one in three homeowner surveys stated that when the con um, they go with their contractor because they offered them multiple ways to pay. And I think that's so important that we give options just like we want options in anything in any part of our business or even as a homeowner ourselves, you know, we want multiple options even in purchasing decisions for every day. So our con your homeowners want options and so it'll be a good morning to talk about what those kind of options are, how we offer that. And don't forget, we always love to hear from you. We wanna hear your feedback. We wanna hear what your thoughts are. And um, I've just added to the chat, you can jump, click on that link um, and tell us a little bit about what you've heard on this webinar. Tell us what you liked and what you didn't like. Give us feedback on our speakers and our event partners. And also on there, that last question ask, hey, what do you wanna hear more on? What kind of webinars can we feature um, that you would feel like is adding value to you and your business so be sure to jump on that link within the chat that we sent out and um make sure that you're able to share your feedback let us know what you think all right cool well i am not going to delay um we are at 1007 let's talk about let's get into the content for today um talking about four things you should know when choosing a merchant services provider the first thing is when is the right time to partner you know when does that make sense to actually get decide hey i do want to invest in having a merchant services provider for, for my business um and then you know, there's always these terms free. We like to throw that around a lot. So what is really free? Jay's gonna go into that, um, as well as some industry jargon that you need to be aware of and educating yourself on best practices of what those terms are that are correct and valid. Those what we would call good terms. And then what are those junk terms that um, you wanna stay away from or um, call out your vendor on when they throw that out. Then finally, there's this term in um, the industry that a lot of us refer to surcharging versus discounting. And this is um, a topic that you need to be educated on because a lot of times I think we do things as um, entrepreneurs and building our businesses that we don't know are illegal at times. and. So uh, Jay's gonna break down the difference between the two as well as give us some insight on best practices um, and how to change your mindset on, on that. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Jay. Jay's career um, spans over the last 15 years in the merchant processing and financial services industry. Jay was quick to notice the merchant processing industry's lack of transparency and um, reluctance to properly educate their clients. He worked tirelessly, tirelessly to spend, to build Spin, a financial services company that strives to empower business owners. And Atlas's um, partnership with Spin led to the creation of the Atlas Plan, a custom merchant processing solution tailored specifically to the new needs of roofing contractors. And I'll tell you, I've been working with Jay on this webinar and gathering quality content for it. And I'll tell you firsthand, this man is passionate about um, making sure that his customers know, whether, regardless of whether you go with spend or not for your merchant processing, or if you're just on here to educate yourself on why you should consider a merchant services processing, I would just encourage you to reach out to Jay, follow up with him after this webinar, make sure that you have spent some time with this guy because he is super passionate about what he does and um, we're super excited to have you on. So Jay, um, without further ado, thank you so much and take it away. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And again, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me on and uh, being here this morning. So when is the right time to partner? This question comes up a lot uh, based on the roofing contractor and really contractors in general uh, gravitation towards some very simple solutions that are in the market like Square and PayPal, right? Uh, so when is the right time to choose an actual or uh, um, merchant services acquiring partner versus an aggregator. And there's two quick differences there. So if, if, if you're looking for a merchant services company, uh, you're signing up as the account holder of record with the banking organization, the card association. 
if you're using solutions like Square or PayPal, you are a sub user on that account. And that's why the requirements to sign up with them are so much less. Uh, and then, um, you know, oftentimes you hear the, the free, the free terminals or the free devices, no monthly fees, all of that stuff. So yeah. really that gets into, if you're taking a credit or debit card payment at least one time a month and your average monthly volume is $1,500 or more and you're ready to grow your business by winning more bids, that's the right time to search out a merchant services partner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're Makes taking sense. debit or credit consistently, you've already tried it. You know, Square is a great solution. However, we'll get into it in a little bit. They tend to be a little bit of the higher pricing, right? But if you're a contractor looking to kind of, you know, dip a toe in, uh, try this a little bit, certainly recommend going that route because traditional merchant services companies do get into having certain fees and so forth, right? Uh, as far as monthly, uh, they we'll see in a second, they should be very nominal, okay? And that's where the $1,500 or more is coming into play uh, because certainly with spend in the Atlas plan, uh, that's the break even on um, a, a free monthly program with, uh, for instance, Square with much higher fee when you do take a card. Uh, versus spend that, uh, you know, full disclosure, we do have a monthly fee. However, our processing fee is going to be so much lower that the break even 1,500, anything more than that, you're running monthly, you're going to be saving over using the solution like Square or PayPal, uh, yeah. even QuickBooks, okay? All right, which are really the three big ones in the industry. So moving into that, and that, that is a great segue to, is it really free? And so when you do start entertaining merchant services, companies, and looking for quotes, you're going to hear a lot about, you know, free merchant accounts, uh, no monthly fees. They'll offer free terminals. Um, some even go so far as to talk about free processing, which is, is what the need of the explanation of surcharging versus discounting comes into play. Um, certainly free internet gateways. That's the, you know, an online version of, of a piece of equipment that can process a card, right? An internet gateway, the way to process cards online. Uh, freebies are commonly bundled with higher fees and hidden charges and contractual obligations. Um, I like to highlight there's a, a big box, uh, of, um, like a Sam's Club or BJ's Club. Uh, and and I, I chose to use both just to protect that business. But they have a partnership for merchant services. If you look at the fine print there, it'll say that this rate is only valid for 90 days. And then they actually don't tell you what the rate's going to be in 90 days. And then they put you into a contract that has a $500 cancellation fee. Yeah. So the devil is in the detail and make sure that you're understanding the fine print and that you understand the fees and the contract obligations before you choose a partner. Um, I think the, it's so the, important too, because a lot of times we are, as contractors, we're not aware of merchant processing terms and lingos, and you know we're we're looking for a solution. And so I think this is great. A lot of times when it is bundled. You know, it's okay to take a second and get on the phone with somebody instead of just signing up and saying, what does this mean? You know, break this down for me. And if, you know, you know, I would just encourage all of our contractor audience to, to take a second and do that, you know, have that conversation with whomever you're going to choose. If you're considering having a merchant services pro um, vendor, have that conversation and make sure you're crystal clear on what you're getting. So that's great. That's right, and you know, the, and probably the biggest takeaway from this is to sit down and really have a conversation about what that contract looks like from a term and a cancellation point of view, okay? Because that's really um, the, you know, you get into a situation where you choose a partner and then, uh, you know, this industry, merchant services is not regulated and, and many companies, just need to give a 30-day notice before they can change anything on your account. And that's oftentimes in a statement or a blurb on your monthly statement, okay? Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and so that's where the cancellation fee becomes critical because six months in, a year in, two years in to a 36 month agreement, you know, now you found out that they've increased your rates and fees substantially. You find another company that can do it for less, uh, but now you have a heavy cancellation fee because you're trying to cancel early, right? Or, or worse, yep. even a, a term called liquidated damages. So again, yep. make sure that you're asking about that cancellation fee, okay? Uh, and really, again, I mean, spend, uh, spend commits to a five-year uh, price guarantee, however, no matter what company you choose, have the conversation about that pricing and having the stability of that pricing. And that's a great segue into the industry jargon and to help us identify some of the good and the bad in the industry when you start to, you know, you've already made the decision that you need a merchant services partner, okay? And now you're, you're doing due diligence and looking at all of the agreements and making sure and so now there's typically three pricing strategies that are used. So depending on who you call, you're going to hear one of three pricing strategies. The first is called tiered pricing. And you'll know it's tiered because the person you're meeting with is going to use terms like qualified and mid-qualified and non-qualified. And all that means is that that company that you're entertaining is, has created three buckets and is at their whim deciding which particular card is going to go into which bucket and they're able again to change that at any point in time and the, kind of the hidden secret here is that your qualified rate which is going to be the best price that they're going to lead with and really hammer and concentrate on is oftentimes less than 15 percent of your overall volume especially for roofing contractors who are doing in a tremendous amount of keying in or sending invoices right from the office. Okay? So the message here is that your business doesn't have visibility or control over your costs if you're in a tiered pricing yeah. program. So, yeah, right. So what, if, what about surcharge pricing? What does that term mean? I see it's red, so that means it's not good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Surcharge is a twist on the bundled. Surcharge pricing, in essence, they give you that upfront rate and they say, okay, we'll do all of your processing for 1.5%. And then they say, we're going to surcharge you though for any other card that comes in that's not a plain Jane regular, you know, old fashioned credit card. So if it's a rewards card or if it's a business card or, and those are all legitimate categories, but okay, so here's your upfront rate and now we're going to surcharge you for all of these other cards that come in. And, the, and again, the situation there is that the processing company that you choose as a partner is determining that surcharge margin, right? So they say, okay, maybe the, maybe the wholesale difference between taking a, a card by swiping it versus taking a card by keying it in is only 0.31%, but we're going to charge you 0.75 when that happens. That's surcharge pricing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And again, your business so still you doesn't have the visibility or control. Yeah, right. You want to get a price that's consistent, you know, whatever that rate is. Correct. And mm -hmm. to go back a second and to give a real life scenario mm -hmm. of that, uh, again, 15 years in the industry, but there was a, a top five merchant processing company that made the decision to offer surcharge pricing. And on the monthly statement, they made the decision to list the card category, the line item, for instance, maybe it was a rewards card, okay? And then they just posted the fee. So in other words, they didn't show the math, they didn't show the rate itself, or, you know, the wholesale element of it. And so they really preyed upon the fact that business owners, contractors, you know, really anyone that's running a business doesn't have all these hats to put on and go out and research this, right? So again, being unregulated, surcharge pricing, stay, you know, the, the message here is it's negative for your business. You don't have that control or visibility into seeing what's, what's going on there. Okay. Gotcha. So talk to us about interchange plus pricing. This is a, jar, a jargon term that we'll see a lot, and it looks like this is a good thing. It is. It's a great thing. It's honestly the gold standard in merchant services processing. So. 
if anyone is out there thinking about taking the plunge and going to entertain, certainly welcome the phone calls. However, just make sure you're working with someone that's offering you interchange plus pricing. Okay. okay. So interchange is a fancy word for wholesale. So what that company is committing to you is that they are going to pass through the wholesale cost of each card that comes through. Okay. There are a lot of different cards and a lot of different rates, but someone who's offering interchange plus can very easily break that down to you and sit down and have a conversation about it. But it allows you full transparency because you see on every monthly statement exactly how much the card associations charge for that card and then exactly how much your acquirer, i.e. spends, first data, global, right, thesis, okay? That's the acquirer fee. So that's your full disclosure and full transparency and controls over your business because at that point, you're seeing it all. There's nothing yep. hidden on the statement. Everything is right out there for you in full description. So when you say, Jay, card association, is that Visa? What is that? Thank is you, that yes. Card associations are Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, uh, PayPal is a card association. Gotcha. Uh, and then there's a few foreign ones for what it's worth. Uh, JCB, um, Union Pay, which is a Korean national bank. Those all connect into the network as well. So you can theoretically take any of those cards, even from a foreign um, uh, citizen that's just moved here, right? Yep. Uh, and, so and through the network, you'd be able to process those cards. Yeah, and so wholesale in short is basically just full visibility to what those charges are, and you definitely want to be able to see that. That makes a lot of sense. That's right. That's right. And you know, a, a great company would offer the opportunity to even keep a business owner updated on what that interchange is because a little piece of uh, info is that it's that that's adjusted or at least looked at twice a year in April and again in October. Okay. Right. And this is the, the an industry. It's a banking system look, right? Um, and so you want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date interchange uh, classes, right? The different pricing. Okay. Because some go up, some go down. Okay. Uh, but that's important for you to have to understand your statement. And so that's, it's available. It's, it's public information. Okay? Great. We want you to have that information. Yep. And then we're back to our red terms, which is rate processing modifiers. This sounds, this sounds really bad. Well, processing modifiers, really fancy way of saying back end charges. Yeah. So the real pitfall of the industry is, you know, Human nature in general is to pay attention to a rate. We buy vehicles and we want to know what the rate is. We, we look for homes and we want to know what the mortgage rate is. And so what's the rate? What's the rate is really just, you know, it's an adult uh, mentality, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a nature. Second, you know, you don't even think twice about it. But what happens is that because it's unregulated, not all, but many companies that you'll entertain will never speak to you unless you ask is there an annual fee or mm -hmm. are there cancellation fees with this? Okay. Do you those have any of these costs. fees that are listed here? Yeah. Excuse me. I just said, yeah, those hidden costs on top of the fee. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So you open up your statement and then on page two, page three, right? All of a sudden, you know, your, your expense after expense totaling up and then that drives up the effective rate, which effective rate is just what you paid in total versus what you process on cards. Okay. Got it. Okay. So surcharging comes up a lot in merchant services and it really has its roots in the thought process of, I, you know, from a contracting point of view, I hear a lot of contractors say, I'm going to go out and I'm going to offer that cash price and it's going to be my best price. And then I find out that they want to use a card after the fact. And then because they want to use a card and I've given my best price, now I'm asking the merchant or, or a line somewhere along the lines of, well, that's fine, but I'm going to have to add X amount, right? Fill in the blank, three, three and a half percent, you know, four percent, whatever. Okay. And that's perfectly legal now. And that's why a lot of the trend has been there. It's been perfectly legal since 2013, okay? Uh, 
settlement of a class action lawsuit uh, in the merchant services industry, okay? But I'd like to cover the key differences between surcharging and discounting, uh, just to take a viewpoint from the homeowner's perspective. So just to cover a key, you know, a couple key terms here, a surcharge is when you're adding a percentage fee to a credit card transaction, okay? So the, and the homeowner is gonna view that as an out-of-pocket cost, right? You've already given them a price, now it's gonna be an additional price just to honor their card, okay? Versus if you thought about financing options, it, you know, as the value that they truly are, and we're all able to get our minds around the value that that offers our homeowners, then we can price that according to the value that we're offering and already have in the price the merchant services and any financing options that we're offering built into that bid. And we're discounting with a cash price, a cash discount, if the homeowner is interested in that. And that is the key difference is from a homeowner's perspective, when you're offering a discount for cash, they're looking at it as an opportunity cost. You're the hero. You're that great contractor, that great roofer that even cut them a break because they had the cash to be able to afford the, the job, right? They didn't need financing your credit cards. So the bottom line is really, you know, any difference between cash and credit card customers uh, should take the form of a cash discount, a gain to the homeowner, um, rather than a credit card surcharge or a loss, okay? Gotcha. So, so what best practice would you say, you know, I, you know, I think one of the things we've talked about internally is we rec really recommend, you know, taking on for contractors to take on a discounting perspective and mindset anyway. It really just helps their business overall because when you're talking to a homeowner about um, a, a discount, a cash discount, you've already built in your pricing model you know, the whatever fees that you need to incur for a merchant processing system and for offering that credit card, it just goes back to that mindset of being able to offer options for the homeowner. You know, I already have this rate for your new roof, but if you want a cash discount, you know, we offer a 5% cash discount or whatever that is that you build in as a contractor. That's right. And I mean, I like to share the story. I'm old enough to remember when McDonald's didn't accept credit cards, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, but the year that they did put credit card machines in McDonald's, uh, coincidentally, year over year sales were uh, north of 30%. Okay. So the value and the convenience to their customers was huge. Uh, but then I just like to, to, to point out when was the last time you saw a 59 cent hamburger? It went yeah. from 59 cents to 79 cents, and now it's on the dollar menu, right? And the reason for that is because they brought in this value to their customers by, by the, you know, allowing customers to pay for McDonald's, which is a, a low average ticket, right? Um, and so the expense on that is a, a totally different animal, but I mean, you can see the point here. It's like they, you have to price it accordingly. It's, and the only way you're going to do that is if you truly look at it as a value to your homeowners. Okay? Yeah. Makes sense. So what should we be considering before if you decide to go with a surcharge? What are those things that um, we should be considering? Absolutely. So, and it's important to note this because there's actually several merchant services companies that exist today that um, are, are built around a surcharge model and their business practices, you know, I'll let you judge for yourself, but they convince businesses that they won't pay anything for merchant services uh, if, if you'll just use them. Uh, but the things that I like to challenge a, a contractor to consider if you're going to uh, use a surcharge model over a discount model, okay, would be what are your customers, what are your homeowners going to think? Again, getting back to the opportunity cost, okay, um, of, of, of having a cash discount, versus an add-on, right, or a penalty, okay? Um, and then what do you need to disclose? Because surcharging is a legal framework within credit card acceptance. And it was settled out of a class action lawsuit in 2013. So there's certain disclosures that you need to have in place if you're going to follow, follow this business model. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, food for thought, what are your competitors doing? I mean, it's important to get a 
a, a pulse on each individual market and see what your competition's doing out there. Um, is surcharging even allowed in your state? There's nine states that uh, after the settlement was entered into, um, specifically wrote laws uh, prohibiting it. And so um, there's more information in the links on that. When can I surcharge? And this is the big thing with those companies and why I said I'll let you judge for yourself because Visa and MasterCard, for instance, both say, well, you can only surcharge credit cards. You can't surcharge debit cards. And if you do surcharge um, uh, MasterCard, MasterCard says if any other brand uh, uh, prohibits it, then you can't arch. So again, there's all sorts of hoops and hurdles. And when you're looking at you know, the opportunity for a deductible, it might be on a debit card, right? It's really putting that responsibility on you as a business owner uh, to make sure that you and all your representatives and office staff are abiding by these rules. So again, yeah. with that level of responsibility, easier to see that a discount model would be a much better um, approach. And then lastly, how much? Because the Visa and MassCard Association have specific rules around what you can charge as a surcharge uh, because they don't want you to profit on surcharging versus a discount model really right. that's a business decision, right? There's no penalties for discounting. So if you wanted to build in a five or a 10% increase, right, you, you, you can versus, you know, it's 0.5 to 4% for Visa. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's the biggest takeaways is that if you decide that you want to entertain surcharge, first of all, make sure it's uh, allowed in your state. Secondly, refer to these links in here because it's going to give you some FAQs and best practices for going down that route. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you build your business, you know, consider going the discounting option um, and building in upfront costs um, for whatever fees that you need and then discounting, um, offering a cash discount at the end of the day. You know, and I think that's really what, Jay, you're recommending versus uh, the surcharge lane. But let's get into um, marketing. You know, once we have people who are saying, hey, we really see value in having options and being able to offer options to our homeowners, whether it's um, green sky affordability options, credit card options um, through a merchant processing service vendor like spend or you know even you know when we get granular they even want options on their colors on what color roof they install and so options are really important again to that homeowner but how do we get the word out right we want to um have these options but part of that is that homeowner actually knowing and being able to buy into oh my goodness this contractor actually is going to up front offer me multiple options and i think you have some great points so let's start with how to know um adding significant and add significant value absolutely so the really the marketing tip starts with a great solid foundation and that great rock solid foundation is going to be understanding that financing options are of value we we've really hammered that on this call i understand that um, but when you look at some of the statistics on this slide on the bottom, we'll, we'll understand why, okay? Yeah. Um, which is 78% of Americans indicate they live paycheck to paycheck, and 57% of Americans wouldn't be able to afford a $500 expense yeah. without having to sell something or seek out financing, whether that's putting it on a credit card or, or needing a loan, okay? So if if... And, and by the way, those are statistics from the federal government, okay? Um, yep. And so, so if we take that, I'm sorry? I said, so it's evident that, you know, a lot of times these guys can't afford it. I know Wade and I did some research last year, and it was like right under $1,000 um, on some of the content we put out, um, that they didn't have $1,000 in their savings account. And the most recent data you pull in here says, you know, half of Americans can't afford 500 bucks, so they need that value of an option. Yeah, I would just, I would just say, generally speaking, one half of the customers that you're going to come across are going to need you to help them bridge the affordability gap. They're not going to tell you that because you're not their financial advisor, you're not their banker or their accountant. But at the end of the day, the statistics don't lie. Yeah. And so what we can do is add value by bridging that affordability gap by saying, hey, 
we take Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. Hey, we offer promotional financing options. So, Mr. Homeowner, you don't have to come out of pocket today if you don't want to. Yeah. Like those are those are things that are adding significant value and allowing folks to do a number of things with their business, cl increase their closing margin or closing ratio, um, increase their average ticket sizes. Um, we know that to be true when you put things on cards rather than paying cash. Just pay more. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, you know, or or upgrade to a you know a core four shingle, right? Yeah. Things like that. So it allows for upgrades. It allows for larger tickets in general. And then you know the third thing is is um, uh, that we have on this is profit margin. But I would also just point out that when you're using a credit card or you're using promotional financing, you're getting paid more or less instantly. So if you're frustrated with waiting on 60 days, 90 days, however long it is, for that large insurance check to come in so you can fund your next job, um, then you know understand that there's, there's value in getting that cash up front. We sure. call that cash flow in the banking business. And that's, that's basically king. Right? Yeah, yeah. Being able to have that money when you need it immediately versus waiting. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. Jay, did you have anything else to add for uh, the back pra best practice of adding value? No, this is all great. Uh, and we're going to get into a little bit about you know the every customer every time here in just a bit and, and yeah. marketing tip too, which is advertising and promoting card acceptance. And really, uh, you know, I know this is a merchant services call, but I'll just uh, append financing options in general to this, right? So you're going to want to advertise on your website with Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, right? And any marketing materials that you have printed up, lawn mm -hmm. signs that you might put out and vehicle wraps like the, the truck we're seeing here. And the thought process really behind that is oftentimes homeowners know how they need to pay before they even start to look for companies to offer them bids. Right. So if I have a few blow offs, I'm talking to Mrs. and geez, you know, we don't, we, we already saw the statistic, you know, uh, maybe I do, maybe I don't fall into that, right? The $500 or more, um, it, you know, the point is, is we've had that conversation and we know, okay, we need to use a credit card for this. Or it's not in the budget, okay? Or we're gonna have to do financing if it's a reroute, okay? If I'm going through Google, if I'm going through, um, you know, even Atlas, right? I'm sold on using Atlas. Um, <laughs> my dad summed that up best, by the way. So when I need to do my roof, it's going to be an Atlas one. I hate the streaks. <laughs> but, oh, <God. laughs> but, going, <laughs> but going on from there, you know, they're going to pass you right by. If they're hitting your website, if they don't see, you know, the Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, or financing options available, right? They're moving right on. So you might not even be getting the phone call to bid on that business because mm -hmm. you're not advertising that you're, you're offering this now. Again, yeah. and if we put our minds around the fact that it's a value, we're pricing it accordingly anyway. So why wouldn't we want to advertise this far and wide? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the idea of having it on a yard sign too. You know, it doesn't take much because I know merchant processing companies, they actually provide you with that little logo lockup with all the different Visa MasterCard options. So it, you know, you can put it literally everywhere um, to, to just kind of promote that and just make it a part of your branding um, when you're marketing stuff. I know I've even seen some contractors on social media, hey, this was an insurance roof, but they were able to leverage, you know, financing options for their, the, deductible payment or you know we offer offer also off, accept a visa and mastercard to be able to knock that payment option in and go ahead and get your new roof done so i love that and you're absolutely right and that gets back to utilizing these tools on every single interaction really hopping out of the truck shaking hands and saying hey you know mr mrs homeowner just want to let you know I accept credit cards and we offer financing options if you're interested and, and then you roll into what it is that you're there to do, right? So just as simple as changing it up and putting that out there first, already plants the seed in that homeowner's mind that there's options available for them 
And then that allows you the opportunity to have that already built into your bid so that now when you're meeting back with that homeowner to go over the results of what it is that you found, right, you'll remind them again. I just want to remind you that we do offer, uh, you know, uh, credit card acceptance, major cards, you know, all major credit cards and debit cards, as well as yep. we have financing options, okay? Uh, and yeah. and, and, and cash a, is king, right? And so... When we did a webinar actually on this topic to just kind of offer language. So if you're listening on here and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm down. I, I definitely want to begin to offer credit cards, um, but I'm not sure what to say. We actually, Wade and I did a webinar um, on what to say, how to kind of uh, verbiage that out. So check that out on Asphalt Life. But um, here, Jay, you're giving some great tips, which of course is some of my pain and passion points um, when I'm talking to contractors about leveraging social media when you're going to market um, and really pull that through everything in your story, right? All of your features and benefits from the products that you offer to differentiate yourself to uh, offering credit cards to um, having um, relevant content that you can share. But, you know, talk a little about leveraging social in that story. Absolutely. So uh, we'll just take one of the social media platforms, um, actually maybe two together, which is Instagram and Facebook, right? Um, if we just took a look at those two and, you know, through your business page, you're posting before and after photos of work that you've done, you know, maybe even pictures of, of smiling homeowners in front of the project, right? And in that social media blast, you're indicating, you're posting that financing options are available, um, all major credit cards accepted, uh, you know, in a blurb of that, right? All, all of, I mean, Facebook is loaded with each town has their own, you know, town and city pages, right? You can become members of and, and, and post this out so that you have the exposure, right? Training videos of, of, you know, certain do's and don'ts, right? I mean, just best practices, anything that'll highlight of value to a homeowner, and so that's really the ticket here is it's, you know, really helping others to, 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 to gain that help back. Okay. And that's, what's going to grow social media. So it's not just about putting you know, maybe our company name out there and that we offer credit cards. It's more about, you know, the work speaking for itself and, and the happy customers and then engaging the community on that level with offering financing and getting the word out, you know, naturally in that way. Okay. I mean, great, great. Um, actually amazing um, examples of this is going to be through the asphalt life um, you know there's content there that you can share you can also go out to the atlas roofing company's facebook page and follow them um, and pick up tips and tricks and some of the values of of the different marketing tools that are out there for you and, and just get a whole lot more comfortable in, in growing your business and being able to advertise these new tools that you have Great. Love it. Yeah, and I would just add on to that, that, you know, when you select a um, merchant services provider, whether it's SPEND or a different provider, be sure to reach out to whoever your rep is. They're an expert in their field. So they're going to be talking to a lot of people like you and may be able to even give you some best practices of things that other contractors in different markets have done. Um, hey, we saw a contractor in Florida doing this. Um, to increase their their um, margins and close more jobs through offering merchant, you know, offering credit cards um, and be able to give those insight tips. So be sure to reach out to people like a Jay um, who can give you that kind of insight and best practices. Thank you for that. And the message there, more importantly, is please consider me a consultant. Um, as Tiara mentioned, friend of Atlas, and so uh, by all means, any and all questions, uh, just give me a call, uh, text friendly as well as email, and we'll get you the answers to any yeah. questions, help you out. Uh, we can even work one-on-one -on -one in, in some of the scripting and, and share with you ideas about how to market this and in different areas and grow your business. And so, yes, it's yeah. accessible here for you. Love it. And so let's take a pause and get some questions. We, we saved about 15 minutes. 
um, for questions. And if not, we'll definitely get you guys out of here a little bit early, but um, go ahead and take a second, um, put something in the chat bar. If you have any questions that you'd like to run by Jay or Wade um, for some important feedback and we'll let you go, go ahead and put that in. I do see one question in here um, from Alexis and um, Jay, she asked going back to the slide where we had the Visa and MasterCard links in right there on the truck. She's saying, is that what you would recommend going ahead and putting those, that lockup right um, in there? And also, um, is that something that the merchant processing company will make available to you? Yes. So we have all of the high resolution logos uh, and there's various iterations of it. It really comes down to what you want to offer, right? Because Visa MasterCard come together, or Visa MasterCard Discover come as a group. So if you take one, you take all three of those. As a relationship with Discover, there's PayPal and a few other international banks. American Express is, is, is a, they're great value. American Express cardholders are typically more affluent uh, and they tend to typically spend more. So um, I think it's a value, especially if we're already pricing accordingly to leave that card on there. But that's what I mean by there's um, different iterations of that we accept sign. So really just have a conversation with me or your merchant representative and go ahead and get the high resolution files that you need um, that are specific to your needs okay uh, that you can add to your website and then also get in any truck wrapping stickers uh, if you've already have a truck wrapped obviously I'm not going to rewrap just to add that so maybe it's a, a magnetic sticker magnet. you have okay. made that you can put on it right yep. um, right on there you know as a as an inexpensive option to start including that content, okay for sure yeah i love it well great any other questions um i know that um as a part of this we'll definitely make these as a uh, assets and uh, best practices available on Asphalt Life, our blog site, and you can reach that um, right there on that slide. It's there, atlasroofing.com forward slash Asphalt Life to find out more resources, read some articles, be able to share additional content. And um, we definitely want you to be able to follow up with um, Jay. He is, as I stated in the beginning, a huge asset, not just to Atlas and our partnership, which we value, but also I think, you know, if you're considering and wanting to have that conversation, um, be sure to follow up with him directly. Um, a couple other questions came in for you, Jay. Um, Mike said, Jay, what is the fee for accepting debit and credit cards currently is there a range or what is the fee is it a two and a half or three and a half yeah that's a great question okay so and i know that really comes uh, from the point of view of looking at you know like a square solution or a paypal solution right where it's where it's that bundled rate um and and, and if you look at that that's where the 3.5 percent is coming from or that um, assuming you know that's the keyed in rate and so here's how spend in particular and, and just just really quickly our keyed in MasterCard, uh, which, is, which is what's needed for a financing option solution that's available, uh, but that starts at 2.5%, okay? And that's starting at 2.5%, so that's keying in. Now, swiping is gonna be less expensive. Debit cards are considerably less expensive. And that's not to say if you have an existing program and we, you know, in, in volume, right, established, uh, you know, um, we couldn't get better than two point. It's a management decision, obviously, right? But but that's just for you know maybe helping out a contractor who's using Square, you know, has about a thousand fifteen hundred dollars consistently, you know, keying in cards at three point five percent, swiping them at two point seven five. Well, with spend, you would be keying them in at two point five percent and swiping at around one point nine five. Wow, so a, a lot a lot lesser than the competitors. So I would say, you know, definitely Mike, reach out to Jay directly to find out more because that is a, a great comparison as in a real world sense of, you know, what that swipe versus um, enter rate is. So thank you for that, Jay. Yeah, um, yeah. Just, now just, only add the, the difference is the pricing methodology. So as I mentioned in the, the webinar earlier, it comes down to squares using that bundled approach where it's either one or the other, right? No matter what card you take whereas spend is using the interchange 
I'm pass through model, which is why I have the varying rates I do. Okay. Yep, got I'm it. Spend it it's big for five years. Yep. Um, Lots of great questions coming in. Um, keep the questions coming. The more the more questions we'll um, continue to answer them. Josh um, Van Dusky asks, um, a lot of merchants have issues with Amex chargebacks. Does Spin advocate on behalf of the merchant um, to fight false chargebacks? That's that's an amazing question. Um, and, and so accurate because yes, American Express prides itself yeah. on being customer, their customer centric, okay? Whereas Visa MasterCard's a little bit more business centric, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the short answer is yes, we would be more involved. Uh, keep in mind, they have access to me and my staff, right? Uh, so we're going to be very, very involved. And that's if they're a customer of spends, okay? Um, I can't speak for any other merchant services acquirer and how they would handle that. That's a, a business decision of, of whatever company you're with and, yeah. and whether they just, you know, take American Express at their word and, and let the chargeback go through or try and, you know, fight that chargeback, okay? Gotcha. Um, there's a lot of information that I can offer in a one-on-one -on -one call about best practices in preventing chargebacks. Uh, and winning any chargeback battle. But again, that's a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, um, please call me or shoot me an email and we'll arrange for a time um, and we'll get you any, uh, all that information. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So lots of questions you guys are sending in around the acceptance rates. What are the exact rates, which I think Jay just went in between two and three and a half percent um, versus his two and a half and one percent. So definitely follow up with Jay on that. One other question, I think we have time for one or two other questions. Um, um, Sean M said, do you have the portable swipe device to connect to the phone application and what is the, um, how does that work? Yep. We do have mobile solutions available that are uh, compatible with any device that would have an internet connection. Um, our device is Bluetooth enabled and so that's why I say any device is that you're just going to yeah. sync it by way of Bluetooth like you would a set of headphones or you know your your phone to your vehicle and then once you um, do that once you'll just turn our card reader on and, and it'll you know sync up and you'll be ready to rock and roll and the application is down um, is in the uh, uh, both the Apple um, and Google Play Store. Uh, Got it. Um, individual cool. rates and so, so yeah, forth on that. Um, by all means, yeah, one off. We'll we'll get with you to break that down further. And we, you know, I think the the takeaway here, which is what our, our our audience is getting to, is you know, what kind of services can you offer that are comparable to what they would go to if they had a different merchant services? And I think the answer, the short answer to that is, your line upon line, apples to apples, able to offer the same device. Um, options as well as um, a lower rate. So if, if this is something that you're serious about getting into as a contractor, I would say definitely check out SPIN as an option, which is, which is um, great. Well, thank you for uh, that. And, and if I may take two more seconds to just highlight that because the Atlas plan uh, is, is relationship centered for Atlas contractors. It's a five year price guarantee without cancellation fees, liquidated damages, anything of the sort, okay? In a pass through pricing um, model uh, that is really leveraging the, the power of Atlas Roofing Corporation and their members, okay? So that's all to say that it's, that's where these great rates are coming from is because we're re leveraging that you know, the membership yeah. that you have, right? That, that you're an asphalt lifer, okay? Love it, love it. Awesome, well, great. And make sure you check out um, uh, this webinar afterwards. Leave us some comments and feedback and we appreciate your, your time for everybody who is on this webinar. And don't forget, live, roof, play together. Have a great one, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you.